Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Dan DeRussia. Uh, today, we're going to be presenting uh, DEP and communicating a little bit more efficiently with our users. Um, we're going to be using uh, install applications, a um, little bit of DEP notify to help communicate what's going on with the process to the users. And we're also going to be using a, a custom PKG that we upload into FileWave uh, to make all this happen. That custom PKG is mostly install applications. So why are we here? You know, most of us want to try and achieve that perfect setup, as Naveem was mentioning before, um, you know, kind of that perfect unicorn, <laughs> that unachievable configuration that um, is just absolutely perfect. And uh, these guys are pretty inspiring people in the uh, open source community, and uh, I've used some of their their uh, code to help make this project possible. Um, as I said, it's been a community effort, uh, as Naveen mentioned earlier, with uh, Eric Gonzalez, uh, Joel Rennick, uh, Graham Gilbert stole uh, some code from Greg, and then we're also looking for um, a way to rename the Mac computer. And of course, uh, Mikey Mikey had a snippet up on his, his repo and um, I didn't want to butcher his name. Uh, I think it's Pierre Olfsen that made uh, Auto DMG, and that was extremely important for our testing to uh, uh, see how the process actually ran through. So, how many people here take about two weeks to get a computer to their end user from the time that they start? Okay, we got a couple. Uh, a week? Okay, I hate all you guys. Um, any, anybody take a month? Month and a half? We'll talk later. <laughs> so our onboarding process, well, we really didn't have one. Uh, it, it, was, it was bad. We had people complaining month, month and a half, it's a very bad process, so um, my boss uh, took on a little bit of that clerical work, and she started working on the back end, and we started working on how we could make it a little bit better for the end users. So we came across install applications, um, as I had mentioned before. It's uh, uh, written by Eric Gonzalez and or Gomez. Sorry, I keep saying Gonzalez. I'll just stick with Eric. Um, and install applications is basically a, a couple of Python scripts uh, that access a JSON file that you put up on a web host. And um, in that JSON file is uh, the payload of uh, the software and configurations, profiles, whatever that you want to pull down and help configure the computer. Some more details. Uh, here's an example of our JSON file, um, and it's really important that you leave everything in your, your JSON file. Uh, you can't exclude, you can't decide that you don't want to type or you, you don't want a package ID. If you leave anything out, it's not going to work right. Even you can't exclude preflight. If you look up at the top, we still have it in the configuration, just nothing within preflight. More example. So FileWave and DEP. Um, FileWave enables us to upload a custom PKG to make all this happen. Um, but again, our end users, when they got the computer, they're sitting there staring at their desktop. And we told them, oh yeah, wait an hour, you know, depending on what their role was in the organization, if they had full Creative Cloud installed on their computer, we'd say, all right, it might take about two hours for the full payload to download. Um, but we still got phone calls uh, with angry users without any software on their, whoop, wrong way. Uh, this is, sorry, jumping around my slides, we don't have any notes that show up here. Um, so I skipped this one. This is actually the, um, uh, the instructions on how to upload your custom PKG up in a file wave. Uh, so I just included that in there so you could review it later. I'm going to have 
the presentation posted so you guys can download it later. Um, but so like I was saying, while the Mac was building, we had these users that were sitting around hoping to use applications that never showed up onto their computer. Um, so anybody here know why nothing actually showed up on their computer? You know, we tell them, go to your, go, go to your orientation, you're going to come back in an hour or two, and you're going to have all this software loaded up on your computer. Anybody? Lid. What's that? Close the lid. Close. Off. Soon off. Nope. <laughs> no network. Nope. Are they out of batteries? Who said went to sleep? Correct. Energy saver. Uh, see, I'm so horrible with my slides. I was supposed to have this one up a second ago. Um, so energy saver. Uh, Apple's default setting is 15 minutes, and then the computer basically shut off or you close the lid. It's pretty much all the same thing. Nothing else is going to happen. Um, the nature of FileWave is all of the software comes down at once, the entire payload. All your settings, everything that's allocated to that workstation is all going to come down at once. Um, so if you had software that took longer than 15 minutes to load, which was pretty much everybody, uh, you're, you're going to have some problems. So what do we do now? Well, we found DEP Notify, uh, written by Joel Rennick, and uh, we decided that um, it was going to be a perfect way to help communicate what's going on with the computer to the user. Um, and DEP Notify is a lightweight application that has a log file, and you basically send commands and different settings to uh, the log file, and it um, will register up in the DEP Notify window. Uh, so. Um, So command image, uh, that links us to our uh, company logo. Um, if you echo command notification on, then notifications will come up through your notification center. Uh, so it looks very Mac-like. Um, and during the whole process, you know, we decided, like I said, that we wanted to try and have DEP notify, read the file wave logs. Um, and there was, this was not built into DEP notify. But we noticed that they had a flag for uh, JAMP. So we took a look at what uh, Joel had going on there, and uh, we said, why can't we make this read our file wave log? And so we had to learn some Swift, and we had to learn some uh, Reggie, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, Joel actually accepted our merge uh, request for that code, and it's now uh, part of DEP Notify. So anybody that uses file wave can uh, use the file wave flag and have the same experience we do. So here's some of that code that we added. <coughs> and what we added here is uh, so we, could, we can uh, parse the log and bring some of that log information up for the users, uh, again, to help communicate what's uh, going on during the process. Here's just a sample of the file wave log. Uh, nothing too exciting, just gives you an idea of what we're looking at, what we're trying to pull out. You see the downloading file set. Um, that, that became important for us to be able to pull out the different stages. So we'll say that it's uh, downloading, we'll say that it's installing, and then we'll go ahead and say that it's installed. So in an example log um, that we have, uh, if you do the command main text, uh, you can put a little blurb of information up there to help um, let your users understand what's going on or give them a little bit more direction. Um, and here's, here's what the window looks like after using some of those commands. And timing became a, a very important thing for us that we really didn't realize. Um, FileWave was getting installed too soon with install applications. Um, 
if we didn't have the DEP um, notify also needs to be able to read the file wave log. So what do you do? So we ended up making a, a dummy package um, that drops down a, a fake log. So when you open up DEP notify, it sees that the log file is there and it doesn't exit. If you use the file wave flag and that log file is not there, it'll just quit, which is a problem. Um, packages can be deployed in any order that you choose. I'll, I'll, uh, I think I showed that in the uh, example JSON file where your file name had a 01 or a 02 in front of it, and then also make sure you put that in your path for download. Uh, you got a launch agent, launch daemon. It's very important to pay attention to your permissions on this. This was something that got us stuck for a long time too. Uh, what worked out for us best was 644 and uh, root and wheel. But now uh, install applications actually takes care of all this for you. Um, Eric went and rewrote, rewrote everything because uh, there was a lot of problems a lot of people were having. So again, he made a second version. Just a little tip on troubleshooting launch agents and daemons. Um, if it's got a process ID, it's loaded. That was helpful. Um, also helpful troubleshooting the running processes, that same script that we had uh, borrowed from Graham Gilbert, uh, who borrowed it from Greg, had mentioned um, uh, a way to track those running processes. And so we found that up in the code. And helped us identify the uh, correct running processes. All of that was in our first version of, of uh, install applications before Eric rewrote it. Since he's rewritten it, uh, it's been much easier to work with. Um, so like I said, we had a lot of issues. Uh, we eventually got it running, but Eric was constantly yelling at us for the way that we were trying to get it to run. It wasn't f following his uh, particular methodology. so. Um, we decided it's probably time that we take a look at his uh, second version of it. And he was right. It's much better. It is much easier to work with. Because um, before we were uh, dealing with uh, race conditions and we had all these extra pieces and weren't sure where we're, what package we had that log file stuck into. And we had scripts watching for other things happening. And like I said, just a hot mess. Here's an example of the launch agent that we use. It's pretty simple. Uh, again, all of this can be uh, downloaded from Eric's uh, install applications website. I just wanted to put a couple examples of what we ended up doing. You know, we ended up changing the label uh, string. And um, if you do that, you have to change a couple other things too. So make sure you read the documentation. Here's an example of our launch daemon. And like I said before, uh, our first version was a little bit messier because we had to create these things all on our own. But now it's part of install applications, and you can just add the different strings that you want to. Uh, if you look towards the bottom, you'll see command, main text, welcome to company. You know, you guys saw that before in our um, notification window. So that's where uh, this data is set. See, uh, in the middle, we're passing the uh, file wave flag. So who's ready for a movie? I thought, seeing as how we're in a movie theater, it would be pretty fitting that uh, we had some popcorn to go around and pass out some popcorn here so we can watch a little demo video. Um, definitely not as sweet as Naveen's, uh, so I'm going to hire him next year to do my slide deck. So this is actually a, I videotaped this with my iPhone and a tripod and scotch tape. I taped my iPhone to the tripod. So I apologize for the quality, but I wanted everybody to see that this is an actual video and it's not a bunch of screen captures pasted together. This is the live build of this computer. Um, right now, we also require LDAP authentication to our server. Um, when this user account gets created on the workstation, it also has their uh, LDAP credentials, their username and password. 
Um, and it's not bound uh, to the directory. It just inherits that. And just for testing purposes, I just put a short name in here. Um, I cleared out the directory password so other techs that were working with this particular computer could log in with the password test. <coughs> Whoop. I wasn't supposed to tell the password. So now this computer account's going to get created. Um, and yes, it does take this long. I apologize. <laughs> Uh, one of the things we do ask for them is to choose on their own if they want to have Surrey on their workstation or not. It's also a nice confirmation for us to know if the process is actually working. Uh, did they get the enrollment certificate? Because there's been many times that it would just skip that right away. We knew start over, something's not right. You know, you forgot to uh, capitalize something or put a space somewhere. I'm pretty good with the spaces. So this is DEP notify. Um, in the upper left-hand corner, we have a uh, custom script that we wrote um, that's going to help name the workstation. Um, at this time right now, FileWave is not installed on the computer. If you look on the right-hand side, you'll see that Keynote numbers, pages, OneDrive is all starting to download. Again, FileWave is not even installed on this computer yet, but it knows to do all that from the uh, MDM enrollment profile. We're going to tail the FileWave log so you guys can see what's going and girls can see what's going on uh, with our log file. Uh, everything happens really, really quickly. Uh, as I mentioned before, timing was very important for, our, for us. So we're going to name our division. Uh, we're going to name the location. And then we're going to go ahead and choose a role. You can't see it right now, but that uh, Python script is still kind of hanging in the background. And nothing else is going to happen until these packages completely download uh, keynote pages and whatnot. So once you see those little pie charts fully complete, that's when uh, FileWave gets downloaded and you'll see the log file start to go crazy. Once the log file starts running, DEP notify is already running as well and it's watching this file. It's watching the log file already. If you look at the bottom of the DEP notify window, you'll see the check out while we download your build information. That's going to change as soon as the FileWave client is downloaded and the log file starts moving. I cheated. <laughs> I'll just be patient. It's new for me. <laughs> there we go. So at the bottom, you see it changed. Please wait while file wave continues. Just trying to give more visual cues to people to see that we're actually doing things on their workstation. Our energy uh, saver profile is installed. So we don't have to worry about the computer falling asleep. And right now it's downloading the kiosk customizer, which you'll see up in the, the menu, the upper menu. It's uh, like a self-servicing application that's part of FileWave. And uh, that FileWave offers some branding on that. So you'll see our logo pop up. And you'll also notice that the progress bar is constantly delimiting. So it's constantly resetting once it finishes its uh, run, it resets back to the beginning and then it takes down the next payload. Our, our computers are, like I said, built off of the name. So that name that was uh, set by the user, that's where uh, Frogger's computer naming script came in handy. And it renames the computer with that prefix and the serial number. Depending on what prefix they put in there depends on what software they're going to get. So if they pick an accounting role, they're most likely going to get a basic computer with Acrobat Office 365 and a couple of uh, company applications or whatnot. Uh, if they chose IT, maybe they get a text editor, uh, Apple Remote Desktop, some things like that. And uh, another thing that our uh, MDM pay, uh, enrollment profile does, it adds our admin account to the workstation without the user even knowing. And it also just converted the user's account to a standard account.
How's popcorn? <laughs> Is there any left? So, like I said, we have a, a, a workflow that is in progress right now um, where we're building all these uh, uh, smart folders that will pull the computer from bucket to bucket. So what it's doing right now is it, it's waiting. Uh, file wave takes two minutes and then it checks back in. It'll run its inventory, see if there's anything there, see if there's any new payloads. If there's not, it, it pops back out. So it's, it's at that in between, uh, in, in between stage right now where it's, it's inventorying itself and, um, and also popping in to see if there's new things that are coming out. So it'll take about um, 10, 15 minutes for it to run through a, a complete um, scan of the workstation and see what's on there. So I am going to cheat here, I think. Because your bags of popcorn really aren't that big. I'm not going to chance anymore. Let's see. Let's see what happens. And uh, another thing that we do too is uh, there's a little help icon that you can put up, a little question mark. It might have got trimmed off at the bottom of the video. Um, we have that set to our internal SharePoint site. So when you're a new user, you can go click on that SharePoint site. You can go and see uh, different videos, different onboarding uh, services for that particular employee. So now you see it downloading a Mac booster selector launcher. Um, and we developed a, a booster technology, or we didn't develop booster technology. FileWave has a booster technology. And a booster is like a distribution point that you keep at, at a local location. But how does this workstation know to go to that booster and not halfway around the world to our corporate office where the main server's at? So we install a booster selector, and depending on what network this computer's on, um, will will dictate what what booster IP that it goes and communicates to. In typical in typical FileWave fashion, that happens at the end of the process, which would have ruined it because then it still would have got the software from halfway across the world. So. That's why we have that going in pretty much before anything else is happening, because I want my Microsoft Office, I want Adobe's and all the Creative Clouds and whatnot to um, download from that local booster, which will cut down dramatically on how much time, drastically how much time it will take to uh, download the software. Now, I was going to punish you guys a little bit and include Microsoft 365, Office 365 with the payload, but I was nice and cut it out. So everybody will get to leave on time. Uh, if you look at the bottom, it says again, please wait while FileWave continues processing. So it's now jumped out of those booster selector smart groups and it's jumping into um, a configuration that was set off of uh, the user naming the computer. So this particular person picked IT and uh, Sherwin location. So they're going to get their printer drivers, they're going to get their location specific stuff, and they're still going to get their role specific stuff. That, um, that they chose. And one of the important things uh, for us, or one of the things that this enables us to do is repurpose computers without needing IT, right? So let's say I have this computer right here and I have it provisioned for um, IT, so there's all these um, applications that an accountant wouldn't really necessarily need. It's probably got admin credentials uh, up on there. And all the user needs to do is uh, boot up into the recovery partition, put a brand new OS on there. And when they boot the computer up, they're going to they're gonna hit our MDN. They're going to go right into our DEP enrollment. And once they log in with their directory credentials that are supplied by HR, or if they're an existing employee, uh, they should know their credentials and they can log them in. The workstation opens up um, at our uh, bootstrapping application. They choose what their location, their role, and all that stuff is, and the computer is going to rebuild to their specs. 
while I'm here talking to you guys. So I'm not doing anything and all these computers are building um, and there's no resetting, there's no flushing, there's nothing that I have to do. It's almost over. So now it's, it's completing its uh, last run in the last bucket. Now it's downloading the software that's specific to this workstation. Uh, I tried to pick some applications that installed without issue. And currently we enable all ARD users just because we haven't taken that away from our entire organization. We have over 200, 250 locations globally throughout the world and we haven't necessarily centralized all of IT yet. So we're still trying to play nice with everybody, let them have their tools, let us have our tools and hopefully someday we can all share tools together and be one big happy IT family. We're installing our antivirus. You see ESETs popping in and the applications. Got Teams. Skype for Business just popped in the dock. That's what that little flash was. Everybody loves their Chrome. Accountants love their Java for their SAP. So VPN connection software. And then we have a DEP cleanup uh, package that runs and it basically just quits the application and then goes through and cleans up all the extra stuff that we have sitting around the machine. So that's it. We have a, a complete computer now. Uh, here's a little bit of the code that we used to wait for the dock. Again, like I said with timing, um, that uh, the bootstrap script that we have running, again, timing. So we had to stick this wait for dock in there. Otherwise, we we're running into issues. Uh, here's some links that I found valuable while I was going through all this process. Um, I'm going to have all this posted up in another link. And uh, you can download the presentation and some of the material I started putting up there for you to download examples and uh, our bootstrap scripts up there if you want to uh, take a look at that. Um, Mosin's uh, GitHub has a lot of resources that I highly recommend if you're struggling with this kind of stuff. Uh, very valuable. Um, Graham Gilbert's always got some good stuff up there. And uh, uh, Cryptid's always good. Uh, he's got a bunch of lists that he's starting to compile for um, resources that help with this process. Some more links. Um, and I think that's, that's it. This is my uh, Mac admin Slack handle. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I don't have a ton of stuff in my GitLab or GitHub, but I'm trying to be a more responsible person and share things that I have like the rest of you have. Um, so there should be more to come in that in the future. Cool. So any questions? This is where you can uh, download all the goodies. Why did you go through such a convoluted process for booster selection? Um, because the booster selection, that would happen at the end. Okay. So you had to get it to finish doing an install set. 
Well, we, we wanted the booster. Yeah. Um, we don't do custom packages for everybody, so it's just one package. Yep. So there's no booster configuration set in there. Um, so by having the booster selector script and reading the network, Mm -hmm. Again, I don't know where this computer is. Maybe one location shipped it to another location because they don't have budget to buy hardware. And I still don't have to get involved. Okay. It, it'll then spool off their local booster, mm -hmm. not the booster where they ship the computer from. And another thing that we have too is we have a lot of people that travel. So we, we have that process go in there right away, but we actually designed it for uh, salespeople and uh, business development that travel from facility to facility. Mm -hmm. And what happens if they travel to APAC where there's no bandwidth? Okay. Right? And just to confirm, you were using uh, smart groups yes. to assign uh, your deployment packages? Yes. Okay. So depending on the naming convention yep. and uh, hitting a couple of criteria, then they'd fall into that bucket Okay. smart group. And on like the final, final install, you would then put a little script into... I don't know, provide a, a custom attribute into FileWave, which would then pick up the next set? Uh, correct. Okay, cool. The, the custom field. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Anyone else? No? No, that's it. I think you've got our way to leave. Well, I wanted to say a couple of thank yous, too, to uh, Laura and her team for tirelessly putting all the effort that they did into this uh, conference. Um, I don't think uh, they've gotten any recognition, so I'd like to get a round of applause for them. AMSYS and Alex for uh, hosting everybody, and uh, the Move IT team that's been...